When we first started keto, we wanted every single item on the suggested keto pantry list. That's absolutely true. And I remember Rachel looking at me going, why are we buying all this stuff? And it's like, because somebody recommended it. But here's the thing, after three years being on keto, there's a lot of things that we don't purchase very often anymore. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So when I first got started on keto about six months before Rachel, I brought this idea to her like, hey, I'm gonna do the keto diet. And she looked right at me and said, okay, so long as you don't have to buy anything extra or buy anything that nobody else in the house is going to eat. Well, guess what? The laundry <laughs> list of things that we need to purchase to make a keto pantry back then was daunting and it just continued to grow week after week as new things came out. It was like, we have to have this. Yeah, we would watch different YouTubers and they'd be like, you need to have this in your pantry and you need to have this in your pantry and don't forget to have this. And the next thing you know, we have a pantry full of stuff and some of it we haven't touched in two years. So we thought it was important to kind of go through some of the things that we bought but we don't really use that much anymore. Yeah, so today we're gonna go over the top 10 things that we really don't use on a regular basis, along with a bonus one that is gonna really surprise you. So you ready to get started? Yeah. So number one, and this is something that we, like almost day one, we're purchasing this and using it on a regular basis, and we actually don't even have any more big bottles of it because I haven't bought it in two years, and that is liquid, MCT oil. Now yes. I do still use the powdered one for my coffee because I use it as kind of a flavor, but the liquid one, we don't buy this anymore. Yeah, we used to buy all the time the liquid flavorless MCT oil. Yeah, and here was the thing. Number one, it's expensive. Number two, if you don't like bathroom pyrotechnics, don't use liquid MCT oil because it runs right, right through, through you. you. So yeah, we stopped using it because it, number one, it's expensive. Number two, um, it didn't really do anything for me as far as my enhancing my coffee. I was trying to use it because everybody said you gotta get more fat in and a great way to do it is add the MCT oil. I shifted over to using the powders because the powders are Flavored. going to give me a little bit of flavor and using the powders, it eliminated putting heavy cream and it eliminated putting a sweetener. So I get a little bit of fat, a little bit of flavor and a little bit of sweetness and it's much less overall calories than what I was doing with this stuff. Yeah. Ready? Number two. I think this one is a little bit of a shocker for some people. Almond, almond flour. flour. We used to use almond flour all of the time. We went through so much almond flour. I want to say at least a bag a month. And here's the thing. I just pulled this one out of the pantry. You want to know how much almond flour we use? This bag was best by November 20th of 2020. <sighs> and like, it's not even We opened. literally bought it and never opened it up. I hate and that. we have some in the canister as well that we just don't use it that often. I mean, we don't really make a lot of breads at home anymore. We don't do a whole lot of like the pizza crust using it because here's the problem with almond flour. And we're not saying almond flour is bad. This is part of our journey. A serving size of almond flour is a quarter of a cup. That's 180 calories, it's five carbs and three fiber. But if you're doing total carbs, there's pretty much nothing you're going to do with just a quarter of a cup. So you're really taking in a lot of total carbs with almond flour because you know what? It's almonds. It's ground up almonds. And you're also dealing with some of the other issues where it's a little bit higher in omega-6 and everything. So not saying almond flour is bad, we're just saying, 
We don't purchase it as often. Maybe just whenever you want to make a cake or something like that, run out and buy a smaller bag. Maybe not buy the Costco bag of it. But I'm excited at the fact that it served its purpose for its time. Yep. So it was the bridge that we needed to make the transition from regular bread to a keto-friendly bread. But then once we realized we didn't need bread much anymore, I'm happy that it's there for people, but we don't have to use it every day. Yep. Number three, this one consists of two items. Rachel's nemesis. Almonds. And Joe's nemesis. Basically all nuts are not like big friends of mine. And we did revisit Nutland. We went a little bit nuts. Oh, this is so like juicy. That's because it's good stuff. Um, at Christmas time, mm -hmm. it's always a hard time for us as far as like nuts and cheeses. And we weren't even eating the best nuts. We were doing cashews and almonds. Exactly. But it's something that I didn't think that we could get through a day without some kind of nuts, mostly because it was like nuts are owed to us because that's what we're allowed to have as a crunchy snack. And I'm glad that we don't have to have these every day either. Yeah. And again, nothing wrong with nuts. Peanut butter, I would say... That's kind of like a borderline issue. Like peanuts really aren't that great for you anyway. You're better off with an almond butter or like some of the like sunflower seed nut butters or macadamia. sunflower seed butters or macadamia butter. Um, but I mean, first of all, if you are going to have peanut butter, make sure you're getting the no sugar added one. Like this one actually comes from, I think, BJ's and it's got one ingredient. It's got dry roasted peanuts. Oh, actually two ingredients because it has sea salt as well. But there's no added oils, sugars, anything be. like that. That's why it, it kind of looks like that. But there is five total carbohydrates and three grams of fiber in this. And it's two tablespoons serving size, which I don't know about anybody else. Two tablespoons, never satisfying to me. But that's also 180 calories. Yeah. And a lot of fat. I don't think I've ever just consumed one ounce of nuts. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So, again, nothing wrong with it. Just something that we've kind of, like, shifted away from like buying it unless we absolutely need it. Again, this bag has probably been in our pantry for four or five months. Right. They probably don't even taste that great anymore. <laughs> okay, what do we have to number four, right? Okay. This was one that we consumed on the recommendation of like lots of different YouTubers. Cod liver oil. Cod liver oil. Why? I don't like fish. And so everyone was like, drink cod liver oil because it's going to give you the higher amounts of omega-3s. And what we ended up doing, we, we went through one or two bottles of it. This bottle is probably six months old. We don't buy it anymore. And instead, I learned to eat fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's a good thing too, right? Because your palate changes. And I mean, sometimes you, you just decide to put your big boy pants on. Right. You know, just like me with organ meat. Sometimes I know I need it and I'll tell him to hide it. But I will say like, okay, green light, let's eat it. And I think the same thing happened. I was happy when we could get rid of this because I don't think this is tasty. I don't care if they like try to mask it with lemon. It still has like a really gross aftertaste. Yeah. Much rather just eat fish. Yeah. Okay. Number five. Not necessarily this brand, just in general, salad dressings. Yeah. We really don't buy salad dressings anymore. And when we first started keto, we had a pantry full Every flavor. of Primal Kitchen and any other avocado oil salad dressing that we could find. Why? Because that's what you did, right? You eat salad and you pour tons of dressing onto it. Well, and that was the thing. And it was the same for every kind of sauce, every kind of condiment. If it was, if it had the keto go ahead, we had to purchase it no matter if it was nine or $10 a bottle mm -hmm. because we thought that we're going to have to like mask the taste of something, Yeah. which we decided that we really like the taste of the meats and vegetables that we eat. And so I want to taste those flavors and not necessarily balsamic vinegar. Yeah, so now, if you are curious, we still do like to put a little bit on our salad when we have a salad, which isn't as often as we used to, but what we like to do is maybe a little bit of avocado oil or a little bit of olive oil, and then some like apple cider vinegar and some seasonings and stuff like that. So kind of getting away from this, and when we really want something creamy, we make our homemade blue cheese dressing. Oh my dressing. gosh, and that is the that is a separate food group as yeah. far as I'm concerned, like it's so awesome. Now one of the things you're gonna notice, a lot of these things have in common is fat, and that is because when we first got started on keto, 
we were convinced because this is what everybody said, you have to eat fat, you have to eat fat, you have to hit your fat macros. And now the more people have studied, you know, the ketogenic way of eating, you don't have to eat your fat. Fat is a lever, you're gonna use it. So if you don't need an extra five tablespoons of butter, don't eat it. You'd rather get the fat to come off of your man boobs, right? What? Well, and also I think that we switched up the types of meat. When we first came over to keto, we were still like, you know, it was all about grilled chicken. And so you have to add a ton of fat to it because we weren't eating pork spare ribs. Right. We weren't eating fatty cuts of meat. And yeah, our uh, our palate has changed in that direction too. Yeah. Now, before we get to number six, I do want to say if you are getting anything out of this content, we would greatly appreciate it. If you hit that like button down below on this video, also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so that you're notified every time we come out with videos like this. Thanks guys. So you're ready for number six? Yes. While we're on added fat, coconut, coconut oil. oil. We used to go through so much coconut oil, like literally one of these at least every other month. And that, that was stretching. I would probably say closer to one a month if you're wondering why does this label look uh, kind of faded, it's because this jug is probably a year old. We never use coconut oil anymore unless a recipe specifically asks for it for the flavor aspect. Instead, we've started using like, you know, more things like tallow lard, yeah. and lard, Yeet. using more animal fats. And so this has been basically pushed to sitting underneath the Blackstone, and this is what I use for seasoning my grill and seasoning my cast iron pans. Which, it works great. It works great for it. And I like using the the fancy pans, so, and the Blackstone, so yeah. I'm glad we have it. But yeah, we really just do not purchase coconut oil anymore. Yeah. Okay, number seven. This is something we went through a lot of, and Tons. we even have recipes utilizing it, and that is flaxseed, flaxseed, both ground and just whole flaxseeds. Now, I still absolutely love the crackers, the mm -hmm. flaxseed crackers that you make, and some of the other recipes that have flaxseed in it. It's just that we don't make them as often as we used to because we can't control ourselves with them right. usually. Like, I would seriously make a recipe of the flaxseed crackers that we have. I'll leave a link for that right up over Rachel's head. And it didn't last a day. And here's the thing, flax seeds, though I consider them healthy, I know some people are worried about certain things with them, they're a little bit high in carbohydrates when you're consuming an entire recipe of flaxseed crackers. That's like, not supposed to be a thing. Consuming the just normal serving amount, perfectly fine. What's a normal serving amount? Cons well, here's the thing. Two tablespoons of flax seeds is four total carbohydrates, but it's four grams of dietary fiber. But again, we like to follow more of a total carbohydrate protocol because going by net carbs, I could literally Nothing. eat like 50 servings of our flaxseed crackers easily and be zero net carbs. So that's why we do a total carb kind of protocol. So yeah. Flaxseed is just not something we purchase a lot of. But with that said, if you're trying to make the transition early in keto from, you know, crackers from the store to a crunchy snack, try the flaxseed crackers because they really are delicious. Or our Cheez-It crackers, yes. which I'll leave a recipe for that up there. Now that's going to use some of that almond flour, but those are the occasions where we'll use it occasionally, just not an every single day thing anymore. Are we up to number eight? I think we're up to number eight. Already? Number eight unsweetened chocolate. We have so many of these still <laughs> because I never wanted to take a chance that we would be without them. So here's what happened. One day we went and they were having like a major clearance and like unsweetened chocolate really doesn't go bad. So we bought a ton of it. But when we first got started on keto, there really, there, in fact, there wasn't. There was no Lily's chocolate bars. Chalk Zero. There was no Chalk Zero. There was no Coco Perfection. If you wanted a chocolate bar on keto yes. that didn't have maltitol in it, mm -hmm. you had to make your own. So we would do a lot of unsweetened chocolate, melt it down, mix it with some stevia, mix in some uh, cacao butter cacao. and make our own. So since then, now if we really want a piece of chocolate, we just buy a Lily's chocolate bar because the problem is 
we can't control ourselves with those eight hours. <laughs> but I like knowing that if that's something, I mean, check it out. Like if you're, if you're like, Hey, I want to try, you know, keto chocolate, you can make it yourself. And if you get a good deal on a hundred percent chocolate, like it, maybe it's worth it. Yeah. Number nine. And this one is a little bit of a shocker for a lot of people, I think, because we have a lot of recipes where we use this and that is liquid monk fruit. Yeah, we used to use just absolute tons of it, yeah. right? With everything. And and I think one of the reasons that we stopped purchasing it as much as we did is because for a long time it was unavailable. Yeah. Like it, it was just gone. You couldn't get it anywhere. So we had to find a supplement. And our supplement became like, we're gonna learn to deal with stevia because stevia can have a little bit of bitterness. It does, and that is why it took so long. It actually took this not being on the market for me to embrace stevia. Cause for the longest time I was like, I cannot do stevia. So you've got to find something else. And that's how he first, you know, found the monk fruit. And we got it in every flavor cause it's in chocolate and they have, this is the lemon kind and vanilla. And I had every single one until you couldn't buy it anymore. Yeah, so we did learn one thing with stevia is there's a perfect amount. Now, what is that perfect amount? It's different for everybody. Up to you. But it's literally one too many drops of stevia and it goes from being sweet to being bitter. Yes. But we just really stopped purchasing this because the other thing is we have really tried to cut down on the sweetness of things because a lot of things that are very sweet can sometimes trigger us to want more sweet things and more sweet things and more sweet things. So we really don't keep a whole lot of like liquid sweeteners in the house anymore. Yeah. Okay. We've got one more. Number 10. And this one is a big one. And I know when we got started on keto and you got your mom involved in keto, we, you guys ran out and bought all of these, right? $8 billion. In fact, we just threw them out. And I'm talking about like two year old ones. And that is... Vitamins and supplements. Every single recommended <laughs> vitamin or supplement that they suggested that you would not be getting enough of because of keto, I went out and bought every, every one. Yeah. Every I mean, single one. We had vitamin C and vitamin D and acidophilus. And I mean, I, I don't even know. I, we literally just were cleaning our house after Christmas. And Rachel comes to me with like, I don't know, a, a milk crate full pills. of pills, right? Vitamins and electrolytes and, and minerals. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like all of this stuff is like over two years old. You can't even donate it anymore. Well, and here's the thing. It became very clear, very fast that a lot of the supplements that I was paying good money for, like you were peeing it out. Like I, my body was not even You couldn't even utilize it. it. And most of them were like literally like rocks, like unusable forms of vitamins and minerals. So it just gave me really expensive pee. And, and that was it. And so we found the keto chow mineral drops yep. that we use on the regular. And then we try to get a lot of our stuff from the food. food. Yeah, people say, where do you get vitamin D? Go outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, serious. Right? The number one place to get vitamin D is go stand in the sun for 20 minutes a day and you will be perfectly fine. It's so cheaper. We get most of our vitamins and our nutrients, whatever we can from the food we eat. And then whatever we can't, we use things like the daily uh, dr mineral drops from keto chow or doing electrolytes like Redmond Real Salt, things like that. Yeah. Okay, so we have a bonus one. Oh, okay. Okay, so here's the bonus one. This is not a keto product, though when we started on keto, we were still using it for a little while, and we didn't actually stop using this because it's not a keto product. We stopped using it because we just don't need it anymore. Yay! And that is cold medicines. Well, really? over-the-counter medicines of any kind. That's true. I don't have to buy Tums anymore. I don't have to buy Pepto-Bismol. I don't need to buy gas pills anymore. Thank you, You don't Lord. need to buy cranberry pills anymore. No, I don't get UTIs anymore. I don't even need dandruff medicated <laughs> shampoo anymore because we just don't have that problem. Even acne stuff where mm -hmm. I, I used to have to, you know, buy medicine for that. Yeah, I'm since keto, there's so many things that I don't have to purchase anymore and they're not cheap. Yeah. Now, specifically, when you talk about cold medicines, when we first started on keto, I mean, listen, here's the thing. You get a cold, you're miserable. I always say, like, I would rather have anything wrong with me other than a cold. I hate having a cold because you can't breathe, you can't taste. Right. I'm just, I'm miserable when I have a cold. Ask her, she'll tell you. But what we started noticing was we just didn't get sick anymore. 
there is some non-keto ingredients in there. So it's another reason to not have them. Yeah. But we just don't really need the cough and cold medicines anymore. Because when we started keto, we really were doing it for weight loss. And we did not understand that the side benefits, and they're huge yep. and, and add up money-wise, was the health benefits to it. Yeah. Now let us know down in the comment section what products did you purchase when you first started keto that you really don't buy anymore? I'm curious, like some of the different things, you know, that people may not purchase anymore. Yeah. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, we have an entire playlist of different videos on topics like this that I'm gonna link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can find right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.